This project is going to deal with editing images in Python. I've prepared some starter code. If you go to this link down below, you can click this download code. You can either download the zip file or you can get clone it if you know how to do that. And let's take a look at what's in this code. So here I've prepared for you a lake and a city image. And so we're gonna actually be editing these images and doing like cool things on those using Python. So in the png.py file, this is some code that Johan Rochel put together and I just copy and pasted this from online. Essentially what it is, is it's a PNG reader and a writer. And what that means is, well, the writer is a PNG encoder in Python, and then the reader is a PNG decoder in Python. So it takes a PNG image and it decodes it into like a Python array and vice versa. For the writer, it takes a Python array and it writes it to a PNG file. Pretty cool. All right, so now in this image class, this is some code that I've prepared for you. And we can see in this initialization, you can either initialize it with X pixels, Y pixels, and num channels, and that will initialize to an empty array of zeros, or you can import a file, and this image will represent whatever file that you've imported. So here we have the input path and the output path. These are just the folders for the inputs and the outputs, and here we have a checker to see if the user has actually passed in X pixels, Y pixels, and num channels. So if it has, we assign those values and then we create an empty array essentially. By the way, number of channels just means like, for example, typically when we work with images, we work with RGB channels. So that's red, green, and blue. And so that's three channels. That's what we're gonna be using today. And then X pixels and Y pixels will describe the size, the actual physical size of the image. So here we're initializing these to all zero and this is gonna be a numpy array of the size X pixels, Y pixels, num channels. So you can think of this command as kind of just creating a three dimensional matrix with dimensions X pixels, Y pixels, num channels, and it's initialized to all zero. That's essentially what self.array is initialized to when you pass in X pixels, Y pixels, and num channels. So if there is a file name, then we actually read that image from this helper function, read image, and set that to the array. And then X pixels, Y pixels, and num channels will set to that array dot shape. At the very end, we're going to add this else statement because if the user hasn't passed in X, Y, and num channels, or if they haven't passed in file name, then we're actually going to raise a value error saying you have to input one of those options. Okay, so let's go over the read image function. So read image, you have to pass in a file name and this gamma, you don't have to worry too much about that. It's just a way to encode and decode it so that your operations are not exactly linear. And so here I'm using PNG reader. This is from the PNG file and I'm passing in the file name. I'm going to read it as a float. And then here we're just going to do a bunch of like resizing things. I mean, I've given you guys these functions for a reason. It's because I don't think that they're critical in understanding how the actual photo manipulation works. So then in this write image, so this function call will write whatever this image represents to a PNG file. And we're clipping it to between zero and one. The reason for that is because when we transform it back into the output file, we're gonna scale everything from zero to 255. And so we're gonna do a little bit of reshaping and write it out to the output file using the PNG writer. And we're gonna resize this array because we did a little bit of reshaping, but we wanna keep it in the same representation, right? We don't wanna actually mutate our representation of the array. So down here, we're just gonna do a quick test to see that this like import and export works. So we're gonna call image equals image.filename and let's use the lake. 
And all we're going to do is we're going to write to the output file. We're going to write image test.png. And what we should see is that test.png should be identical to lake.png because we haven't manipulated the array at all. So let's try that. Okay, so test.png, this is the same image. And so where the bulk of our code is going to be is in this transform.py file. We're going to implement a couple of things here. The first thing that we're going to implement is adjust brightness. So how do we adjust the brightness here? Basically, when we adjust the brightness, we want to scale each value of the pixel by some amount factor. That's a value greater than zero. It's basically how much you want to brighten or darken the image by. If the factor is less than one, then we're darkening. And if it's greater than one, then we're brightening. So first we have to figure out how big exactly this image is so that we can iterate through each pixel. And so first we get image.array.shape because remember that we've stored our values in self.array for that image. All right. So basically we're getting the X, Y pixels, and then we're getting the channels. Okay. And then basically we're going to make an empty image so that we don't actually mutate this one that we're passing in. So this new image is going to be X pixels equals X pixels, Y pixels equals Y pixels, and then num channels equals num channels. So it's going to be the exact same size of the array that we pass in, but now we're just going to be mutating this new image so that we don't change the original one. This is maybe the most intuitive way to do this. It's non-vectorized. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. I'll show you in a bit. But essentially, we're going to iterate for every single pixel in X pixels, for every single Y pixel, and then for every single value of the channel. So literally you can imagine this 3D matrix and you're iterating through each individual value. And then for that value, well, we have to adjust the brightness by some factor. So we're gonna say new image and we're gonna take the array and then we're gonna index into whatever position that we're currently at. So X, Y, C. So at index X, Y, C, we're gonna set this equal to our original image that array at x y c so that corresponding pixel and then multiply that by the factor that the user has input and then at the very end we're just going to return the new image so let's actually try this first to see that it works here at the very bottom i've provided already a little bit of code that tells you all right load the lake and load the city so let's lighten the lake for example. So let's say Brian M equals adjust brightness lake and then some factor greater than one. So let's just do 1.7. And then we're going to write this image to brightened.png. So let's try that. So Python 3 transform.py. And we get this image that's slightly brighter. We can compare this to the lake if we move these side by side. You'll notice that the brightened one is like slightly brighter. So let's actually try also darkening. So darken image equals adjust brightness. And then let's make the factor 0 0.3. And let's save this as darkened. And now running that again. All right, we get the darkened image here. So we can tell that this is darkened from our original image. And let's compare these side by side again. Right, so the darkened image does look darker. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that this is a non-vectorized way to do it. And this is because this is the most intuitive. Like this is behind the scenes. If you are brightening or darkening something, you have to adjust every single pixel value and increase or decrease it. All right, so one faster way to do it is the vectorized version. So we said before that these are numpy arrays, but the strength of this such array is that, okay, it's numpy, but I've always read it as numpy. But basically the strength of this array 
is that you can vectorize these operations. So if you want to add a constant, if you want to multiply by some scaling factor, you can directly just call that array and then times that factor. It's significantly faster than iterating through using a for loop. And we can see that this does the exact same thing if we just let it run on the darkened image. So let's do darkened image two. Let's call the transform. All right, we get this darkened image two. And this looks the exact same as our darkened image. Let's move on. Okay, we're gonna adjust the contrast now. So when we adjust the contrast, we're gonna be doing the same thing where we wanna create a new image, copy, so that we can put new values in without modifying the original image. We're gonna be repeating this for X, Y, and C thing because even if you can vectorize things, I, I like this way of just showing you guys what's like actually going on. Here, we're gonna index at X, Y, C, that position again in the array of the new image. So what adjust contrast does is it adjusts the contrast by increasing the difference from the user defined midpoint by some amount factor. So essentially, if your point is above the factor, then you take that difference, you scale it by factor, and then you add back whatever the midpoint was. Same thing for the other side. So basically what you're doing is given this midpoint, you're making the difference from the midpoint greater. So we're gonna take the image.array and we're gonna take the value at x comma y comma c, subtract out the midpoint, and then scale that by the factor, factor. And then we're gonna add the midpoint back in. All right, and then of course we return that new image. And just to show you guys what the vectorized version would look like, it's just new image.array equals the image.array minus mid, which is a constant. So it's taking that entire array, subtracting this mid from every single value in that array, scaling that entire array by factor, and then adding back a constant mid. So it's literally taking every single item in that array and adding the midpoint back in. All right, so now let's try adjusting the contrast of this lake image. So let's do increase contrast equals adjust contrast lake two, because remember the, the higher the scaling is, the more the contrast we have, right? And let's do the midpoint 0 0.5 because we're working on a scale of zero to one for these images. And now we're gonna write the image, let's call it increase contrast.png. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but let's decrease the contrast now. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, except instead of two, I'm gonna pass in scaling factor 0 0.5. And here, let's just call this decreased contrast, and we're gonna write this to decreased contrast.png. Let's run this. Okay. So let's compare these. So this is our original, and then this is a decreased contrast. So you can see that it's significantly grayer, and this gray just means that the contrast has decreased and everything's closer to being the same color, which just happens to be gray. And now this is the increased contrast. You can tell that like, I mean, the contrast has really been increased. The colors are a lot more drastic in this one, right? Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna implement is a blur for the image. So in the blur, we pass in a kernel size. And this kernel size just means how wide do you want this blur to be? Because essentially what we're doing when we're blurring is we're taking that pixel and averaging it with its surrounding pixels. And so if the kernel size is, for example, three, then that just means we're taking a pixel and we're applying this kernel around it. So it should be taking the left and the right neighbors and top and bottom, the four diagonal corners. For example, a kernel size of 15 would take the seven to the left, the seven to the right, and the seven to the top and bottom and everything in that square. All right, so once again, we are going to create a new image to make a copy to and we're just gonna use a naive implementation of iterating through each neighbor and then taking the average at the end. There is a faster way to do it, but this again is more straightforward to understand. It's more straightforward to figure out what we're doing. 
the faster way to do it would be to incorporate some sort of like memoization which means so for example what we would do is we would move like along the x-axis and every single time instead of resumming every single neighbor we just get rid of one column and then we add in the next column and so on and that would decrease the number of operations that we actually need but again this is more straightforward so we're going to use this way for now first we're going to create a variable total equals zero and this is going to keep track of what the total of all the summations of the surrounding pixels are and of course we need to know how many neighbors we actually have to go for so we're going to find neighbor range as how many times does two go into the kernel so how many neighbors to one side do we need to look at essentially is what this represents and here we're going to say for each xi in the range x minus neighbor range to x plus neighbor range and remember that we have to add this plus one because range goes from the lowest to the highest minus one, right? That's just how Python works. It doesn't include the end of the range. So you may think that this is all good to go, but what if X minus neighbor range is actually less than zero? Then it would go out of bounds. So here we're gonna add a little bit of bounds checking. So we're gonna say, take the max of x minus neighbor range or zero. So for example, if x minus neighbor range is negative, then we would say, okay, no, cut it off at zero. And same thing for x plus neighbor range. We want this to be the minimum of the maximum value that we can take, which would be x pixels minus one. And the reason why we do minus one is because x pixels is the length, right? And we have to subtract the one because that's the highest possible value that we can actually index into. Remember that Python, we do zero indexing. So then again, we're gonna do the same thing for the Y neighbors, and we're gonna keep these bounds because they are the same, but instead of X pixels, we do Y pixels, and then we do Y plus the neighbor range. Every single time we go through a new neighbor, we wanna add that value from the past in image to our total. And then at the very end, we can say our new image at that specific index is equal to the total and then divided by the total size of the kernel. So how many things did you just sum over? We have essentially a box of size nine, right? Nine elements in that box. So we have to square our kernel size and then divide our total by that. And so that just gives us the average value over that pixel and its neighbors. And then we return this new image. Okay, so I'm actually gonna run this blur on the city because the city, it has more lines in it. It's more obvious if it's blurred. So let's do a blur with size three. Blur three equals blur city comma three. And then we're gonna write image and call it blur K3. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with a kernel size of 15, just so that I can show you guys the difference between using a kernel size three for a blur and using a kernel size 15 for a blur. So let's run that. Okay, so our blur of three is done and you can see that it looks slightly blurred when you compare it to the original. So our blur, we know that our blur is doing the job and it's still running for the 15. Again, this is not the fastest way to do it and the higher your kernel size is, the slower, the more this is gonna make a difference. It looks like our 15 is now done. Okay, so let's open that. And now we see that this is like noticeably much more blurred than our original. And the reason is literally just because we've taken more pixels into account when we've created this average for that one new pixel spot. Okay, so actually this blur that we've implemented above, we've actually implemented applying a kernel to an image. And so what that means is we're taking a matrix and we're applying it to every single pixel and summing up whatever values in that matrix times whatever value is at the corresponding pixel. So in this blur above, it's a kernel of size n by n, and each value is actually one over n squared. All right, let's see how we can create a function, apply kernel, so that we can take in any kernel and we can apply it to our image. So we're gonna assume that the kernel is square. 
First thing that we're gonna do is we are going to, again, paste the code that we had above. And here, our kernel size is slightly different because we're not passing that in. Instead, we have a 2D numpy array, numpy, 2D numpy array that represents the kernel that we'll use. The kernel size is just one dimension of the kernel 2D array. So we can just say kernel.shape zero. We're going to keep this iteration through the neighbor range. And so here we need to actually find what value of the kernel corresponds to that pixel that we're at. So XK is actually whatever XI we're at, which is representing, you know, X minus that neighbor range, right? So we're actually going to add that neighbor range back in and subtract X. And you'll see that what this does is essentially it's centered around X, Y, right? So at X, Y, that would be the center of the entire kernel. But now we're trying to shift the zero, for example, up to the top left corner. So that's, that's what that, those are the operations that we're doing here. If you draw it out, it makes a lot more sense. All right, and then for Y, we're doing YI plus the neighbor range and then subtracting Y from it. Okay, so then the value at the kernel would be kernel and then indexed at XK and YK. And we add to our total, this variable total, we add the image at that index, X, I, Y, I, C, but then we multiply it by the kernel value from our kernel. And so then the new image, that array, is X, Y, C, and that is equal to whatever the sum of all of these are. And then of course we're gonna return the new image. So let us So I'm going to so I'm going to show this to you guys on an edge detection kernel. It's called the Sobel kernel. So in the x direction, it's going to be this array 1 2 1 0 0 0 negative 1 negative 2 negative 1. And this y kernel will be the same except there will be some values that are switched. So I can write this in a 3D format that's a little bit easier to see. And so we're applying this over every single pixel in our image. And now here's the Y's. All right, so you see these are almost the same thing, right? Let's apply this kernel to the city. So let's call that sublux, so X, apply kernel, city, and then sublux so X kernel. And then we're gonna write this to edge x.png. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the Y kernel. And now you'll see why I called these X and Y. So let's run this. We go here and we look at the city on one side. And now let's look at this edge X. So you can see that this edge X really like, I mean, look at that horizontal line right there. It's an X edge detection filter. And now let's take a look at edge Y. So you can see how this one really highlights the Y edges, right? The edges in the Y direction. It would be really cool if we could just put these together and create an edge detection filter. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next. We're gonna combine these, make an edge detection filter for our image. So here, we're gonna combine images, image one and image two. So one thing here is the size of image one and the size of image two have to be the exact same thing. The arrays have to be the exact same dimensions. And we're gonna, again, copy this shape and create a new image. And we don't need any of that kernel stuff. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the value from image one, square it, the value from image two, square it, add these two together, and then take the square root of the sum. We have X, Y, and C. And index at the new image is going to be, it's gonna be whatever is at that index in image one squared plus whatever is at that index in image two squared and then the entire quantity square rooted. So this to the power of one half is just square root. And at the end, we're gonna return new image.
and up here we are getting an error because this should actually be image one or image two it doesn't matter they should be the same shape right we said that like when we define the function let's try it on sobel x and y so in comment some of this stuff and at the very end we're going to do sobel x y equals combined images sobel x and sobel y and so then sobel xy dot write image and let's call this edge xy dot png alrighty so let's run this so let's set all of these next to each other so on the bottom right we have the original image then we have the x and the y filters and now check this out so this is the images combined the filters combined and you can see that this is a pretty cool edge detection filter and let me try to actually like zoom in make this a bigger image so this is our image and check that out i mean you see all the edges in the image basically pretty cool look at that skyline and so yeah, using all of these techniques, you could literally implement Photoshop in Python. Pretty cool.